So, uh, what is Bihor like? Uh, you were talking about that the, all the practitioners in the lineage are very good scholars, very scholarly people and educated. Oh yeah, it's a tradition. It's a tradition. Uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Liu, Mr. Liu started the training day by um, teaching uh, Mr. Bai um, traditional academic subjects like Confucianism and uh, Taoism. And he wouldn't start the martial arts training until Mr. Bai finished <laughs> the, the morning homework. So um, that's, that's, I would say that's the primary reason why Mr. Bai was uh, able to, to explain his art very well, because uh, he, was, he, was, he was taught well. He was a scholar before, he was a scholar first, then a martial artist. And um, the sad thing is uh, many martial artists in, in, in China, in, in old time China, they, they, they receive little education. Uh, in fact, quite a lot of them are, were, were illiterate and uh, they, they were not able to, to explain the art. They were not able to um, teach it to, to, to the next generation. And uh, even though they are very accomplished themselves, and, uh, I've seen many such uh, uh, cases as well, and uh, I think it's very sad because uh, a lot of knowledge is is lost this way. So um, I think this is a very good tradition uh, in our in our lineage, and uh, academic always comes first, and uh, education always comes first, and um, mm. that's why. Uh, that's, that's how we make sure the art is uh, passed passed on properly um, to the future generations. I see. I think this is why your book is so clear. There's nothing mysterious or you know obscured by language or anything like that. I think it helps that you're <laughs> you're totally bilingual as well. And while <laughs> we're on the subject of the lineage, um, what I mean, we're going to have many conversations. Uh, and interviews hopefully in the future, but just briefly, what what um, do you know about Liu Hongjie from what Bai Hua or your teacher told you? I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about uh, uh, Mr. Liu. Uh, like I wrote in my book, uh, Mr. Bai only mentioned to me that uh, although he was quite a lot taller and uh, stronger than than Mr. Liu, Mr. Liu could just toss him like like, like tossing a baby. You just toss him around uh, when 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 they train. Uh, I I know he's a very accomplished uh, scholar. Like I said, uh, he seemed to be a very good calligrapher as well. <laughs> what about uh, his Taoism, Momin? I mean, he he's was he um, what particular branch of Taoism? And do you practice that? Do you practice his his religious Taoism as well, or just the martial arts? Maybe. Oh, um, Mr. Bai has uh, has mentioned uh, other Taoism practice to to me, but uh, I feel those are beyond <laughs> beyond my beyond my ability to 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 comprehend, and uh, they they involve something very mysterious, and uh, which I which I, <laughs> I I dare not I dare not to talk about. <laughs> Well, let's let's um, touch upon uh, Bai Hua's Xing Yi Chuan, because I know you've practiced it, although you feel it's it's also beyond you. Why is it? What makes it specific to to Liu Hengjie and Bai Hua's lineage? Why is it so? As you said, it's very advanced. What makes it so advanced, the Xing Yi Chuan? In the Mister Bai system, Tai um, Chi Chuan and Nei Gong is the primary school. It's the primary school syllabus, and uh, it's difficult enough because uh, his his requirements is uh, very high and very strict. And um, <clears throat> uh, according to him, if um, if two people are both proficient in Tai Chi Chen, and if they fight against each other, they will just mutually destroy each other. Uh, hence, there's a need to invent another art 
that trains something deeper than Tai Chi Chuan. That's why Sheng Yi appeared. I, I, I know that might offend someone, but uh, I, I'm just quoting what my grand teacher said, okay? <laughs> That's Mr. Bai's knowledge. Uh, that's, that's Mr. Bai's idea, not me, okay? <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Bai's uh, Sheng Yi, uh, I, I, I don't know much really, I must say. Uh, he only taught the Pi Quan and uh, Bang Quan to Mr. Yang, and he told Mr. Yang that that's pretty much all you need to know. And then he passed away shortly after, it's very sad. And uh, in fact, I must say, I don't even know if I'm practicing correctly or not. And uh, from, from what I know, from what I know, which is very uh, little, uh, it, it trains, it focuses on training the 12 meridian lines that links to the five uh, organs uh, in the body. And um, according to Mr. Bai, if you are, if you reach a certain level, you can start to feel um, tingling in the acupuncture point along the meridian line, provided you can do it properly. He said that's 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 energy. And uh, he also said if you feel there's there's tingling in these uh, acupuncture points, you need to retrieve it back to Dantian. Uh, that means you need to suck in your 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 dantian uh, deeper into your mingmen mingmen acupuncture point. And uh, after many years of practice, I start to feel a little bit of tingling in my finger, and and that took me like twenty years to <laughs> start to feel just 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 the surface of it. I would say. It's just, I, I can only feel very little bit at the tip of my finger. If I'm doing it correctly. If I've I'm seen, doing it correctly. I've seen your Xing Yi Chuan and it's, it, it's really one piece, you know, like one solid thing. It's very integrated, I can see that. In the same, like we talk about Tai Chi Chuan being uh, primary school and Xing Yi Chuan being more advanced, how about Bagua Chen. I know we're not going to really discuss Bagua Chen today, but in the in Liu's thinking or Bai Hua's thinking, was that even a higher level than Xing Yi or, or the same level? That belongs to the university syllabus. And uh, well, in fact, according to Mr. Bai, uh, none of his students has uh, graduated from primary school yet. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like I told you, Xing Yi is already very difficult. How can you start to feel energy tingling in your acupuncture points? Yeah. yeah. You must be really, really advanced to be able to feel it, right? And, uh, I mean, this is, a, this is a subject in itself, is the standards people have for what they think um, we, we could be the fruit of a particular practice. You know, like I always say to people when they ask me what, 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 benefits can you get? I say, well, everything has a certain kind of power that develops, right? Or a force. Yeah, yeah. Especially internal martial art, there's a specific power or force, even Buddhism or Taoism. Well, and it's not it's not vague, it's not kind of wishy-washy or fluffy or something. There's a certain kind of, in each art develops a different force. But yeah. I think in the, in the West, um, people have a different standard. When I was in Asia, my, I noticed my teachers, <laughs> When they, they looked at Westerners practicing generally, they would just be baffled. Again, this is not, not to um, insult anyone because there's some great Western practitioners, but obviously they were looking at, you know, the early days of YouTube and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I think that the, the idea of having a standard is very interesting, isn't it, in a particular system? Yeah, that's true. Um, that's what Mr. Bai stressed all the time. He said, uh, if all three martial arts are training the same thing, then then why why do you need to separate the <laughs> three, three different right. schools? Right. So they, they, so they, Mr. Bai said, yeah, they are training something different. And uh, back to your questions, uh, what Mr. Bai said is, uh, Bagua Jiang is training the, 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 the nerve system. And uh, I thought training, training the meridian line system is uh, difficult enough. 
<laughs> then it talks about training, training the nerve system that, that goes even deeper, right? And uh, he said, what you really need to know in Ba Gua Jiang is the uh, single palm change. And uh, he has uh, explained to me once, and uh, I don't know if you remember, I, I, I've sent you a video of uh, Mr. Bai performing the single palm change once. Yes, yes. A years ago. Yep. And uh, that's, that's actually quite a lot of detail. That's, that's quite a lot of detail uh, within it. And um, it's, it's <laughs> I've seen this demonstration and uh, I can guarantee you, you will not want to be at the business end of this single palm change. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm about 145 pounds and uh, Mr. Bai was able to send me frying with just a finger while he's sitting down. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that, that's, that's some solid power. That's some solid yeah. power. And um, I, I, since, since it's really quite, quite, quite advanced, uh, I could only remember a few points. Uh, like uh, one of the points he said is, uh, in, in, in Ba Gua Jiang, um, it's really the Dan Tian that's, uh, rotating and spinning is not the limbs. But uh, like, like I said, his definition of uh, Dan Tian is uh, very deep and uh, very straight, very straight. And uh, it has to be set up perfectly correct. Uh, your hip can't tilt, say, say your hip can't tilt backward or forward. You just have to get all the alignment correct. And that's how he defined a dantian. It's not just a hit. Right. Uh, now, uh, in the last last few minutes, and once again, we're going to come back in, in later interviews and discuss this last topic in much more detail because I think it's very important. But you've been on the front line in the so-called protests and the what there were what were really battles right ongoing battles for several years so as a martial artist as a as a you know as a, as a man as a human being what did you when you look back on those years of struggle um, yes. what did you learn uh, i mean it's a very big question but what what did you what did it teach you what 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 is the highest value of human beings <laughs> It's freedom, right? <laughs> right. If you lose your freedom, then uh, nothing else is meaningful. That's that's the that's the purpose of my fight, and uh, I've been fighting the front line for more than ten years, and uh, I I I don't even know how to define it. <laughs> is it a protest or is it a battle? <laughs> but um, I say it's something more than brute force, uh, more than using brute force. And uh, I'll say it's uh, those fights in uh, when I look back in the past uh, 10 years, it has uh, very important implications in, in, in fact, in the entire history of Asia. Because uh, what's happening in Hong Kong is really <coughs> the, the, the course of history in the whole Asia. We can see um, the, the Taiwan Strait uh, crisis uh, we are seeing now is directly affected by uh, by what's happened in Hong Kong in 2019, um, because of because of that uh, uprising at that time, uh, <clears throat> the, the 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 Taiwanese uh, no no longer wish to uh, uh, let's say become a Chinese again. They want to seek independence uh, from from China. And uh, that eventually leads to what we are seeing now. And uh, I believe the Taiwanese just just shot down one of the Chinese drones today. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, with bullets. <laughs> so, wow. So, uh, yeah, I would say those protests were not just a uh, not not just my personal struggle of freedom. Uh, is affecting the, the, the course of history. And, uh, and, not, and 
Another point I would like to stress is uh, many people think of China as the mainland, as the, as the parent of Hong Kong. I would say that's not true. In fact, it's quite the opposite. From Qing Dynasty onwards, the Qing Dynasty, the Nationalists and the Communist regime, they live on Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the real parent of China. Hmm. Without Hong Kong financing the invasion uh, of Xinjiang in, in, in Qing Dynasty, we wouldn't even have the Xinjiang human rights problem now. Because Xinjiang would, 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 would belong to the Uyghur people. And it's, it's actually Hong Kong <laughs> that made it happen. <laughs> and to be precise, it's, it's actually HSBC. <laughs> HSBC. <laughs> East India Trading Company. <laughs> <laughs> East India Trading Company might have surprised and fire arms. But the most important part, the money came from Hong Kong Bank. <laughs> oh yes, the, the, the history, I, I remember you shared a lot of this with me. It's it's very, very complex, very old, very convoluted. There's a lot of strands. And uh, Moming, we're going to talk a lot about this in the future because uh, for reasons that we'll, we'll talk about later, but it's it's a huge subject, isn't it? And as you said, it's it's got importance for the whole world, really, even not just Asia. But it, this is a time when uh, the Hong Kong question of freedom is actually it's pivotal in a way, isn't it? Because it's um, connected with China, what China does. Lots yeah. to talk about. Lots to talk about. But um, I just want to say for today, because uh, we're out of time for this show, but. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, your decades of, of practice and knowledge. And let's meet up again very soon and carry on with more questions about this, all these topics. Yes, I can talk uh, a lot more detail about uh, Mr. Bai and uh, Mr. Yang's teaching. Yeah, this is a good introduction for, for our viewers. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you.